In this video, I'll be showing you how to make many of your own rust repairs. By making your own repairs, you'll not only be saving money, but you'll have confidence in knowing that your repairs are done properly. In most cases, it's not necessary to have torches and welders to make good repairs. I'll show you how to make strong repairs with very basic tools and products available to you in various retail outlets. Since this video is slightly more advanced than my dent repair video, I'll also be introducing some basic auto body shop tools later in this video. If you haven't seen the dent repair video yet, you might want to pick up a copy. In it, I share a lot of basic product knowledge tips as well as time and money saving tips. Look for the Smart Body Shop Talk logo on other videos as well. Now let's look at some tools and equipment I'll be using in this video. I'll be using a drill, drill bits, sanding attachment, and a wire wheel attachment. And I'll also be using a sanding block with assorted grits of sandpaper. I'll also be using a rivet gun, 1 8 inch rivets with a quarter inch grip range, a hammer, and tin snips. In addition, we'll use reinforced body filler, regular lightweight body filler, pull rod, plastic spreaders, glazing and spot putty, primer paint, masking tape, OSFO, which is a rust neutralizer, aluminum screen wire, and unwaxed dental floss. Many of these products can be found in Bondo's Dent and Ding Kit. For your personal safety, you should also use eye goggles, dust mask, and rubber gloves. Before we begin, let's review some common safety practices. Safety is your responsibility. Always adhere to all product labels. The procedures outlined in this video do not in any way imply that you should use any of the products mentioned in this video in a manner inconsistent with the manufacturer's intended use. Pay particular attention to any cautions or warnings the manufacturer may have indicated on the product labels. Be familiar with the operation of power tools before using them. Use sound judgment and common sense when using them. Do not use flames or create sparks around flammable materials. Keep these materials at a safe distance during grinding operations. Always wear eye protection and dust mask when sanding or grinding. Keep floor and work area neat. Work in a well-ventilated area. Let's begin here with surface rust. While this damage is easiest to repair, it will continue to corrode the metal if not repaired during this early stage of rust. Surface rust begins when metal's protective coating, the paint, is damaged. Often, this is the result of nicks and scratches. Surface rust can also begin right in your garage or the body shop if during accessory installations they are not done properly. The primary cause of rust around accessories often occurs during installation. When drilling holes for accessories, if the filings are left, Rust begins and accelerates at a very fast rate, as in this luggage rack. Unlike the damage you just saw, this luggage rack was professionally installed. Always remember to remove the filings during accessory installation. Now let's get back to our repair. Remove the hardware holding the trim in place, and very carefully pry the trim out a little bit. And I usually use the wooden paddles to hold the trim out. So I can gain access to the rust. Now I'm going to take a very coarse sandpaper and clean that rust up. I've wrapped the sandpaper around another wooden paddle. I'm going to clean that rust up. We've cleaned the repair up with our coarse sandpaper, and now we're going to apply a little bit of OSFO to the repair and let it dry overnight. But first, I'm going to show you a little hint when working with OSFO. Let's remove our paddles. On vertical surfaces, the OSFO may damage the finish below the repair as it runs down the body. You can avoid this by building a gutter with your masking tape to catch the excessive OSFO. Kind of roll it up. 
And if you need to, tape it back to the trim. Next, apply a light coat of OSPO to the damage. We've allowed the OSPO to dry overnight. We're going to remove our trough now. And re-sand the damage with a finer grit paper. We're going to tape off the area surrounding the damage. We've taped off the area surrounding the repair, and now we're going to apply red oxide primer over the repair. Try to spray some of the primer up under the trim. Allow the primer to dry and this repair is nearly ready for painting. Remember, primer paint is porous which means water and other basic elements can easily penetrate through the primer and attack the metal again. You should apply touch-up paint as soon as possible after priming. Now let's look at another repair. Now let's repair some damage where the rust is actually eaten through the metal. When we start to grind this damage, you'll see that the rust actually extends beyond the visible damage. But first, we'll need to tape over the cowl vent and surrounding area. The fines created when grinding are not only very corrosive to the exterior finish of your car, but can also be very damaging to the inner body structures. These fines can cause rust at the first sign of moisture or humidity. First, let's grind this area with a coarse sandpaper. We finished sanding the damage. Now we'll lightly need to tap the repair in about an eighth of an inch before applying filler. Now we're ready to fill this damage. I don't recommend any repair that fills the inner body cavity with body filler. Unlike common practices, I'm going to show you a technique that allows you to fill the damage with one application of body filler. Let's go to the workbench and I'll show you how to use that dental floss and screen wire. Cut a piece of screen slightly larger than the damage. Next, thread a piece of unwaxed dental floss through the screen. By holding the floss with one hand, you can carefully push the screen through the damage, then pull it tight against the inside of the metal with a dental floss. Tape the floss in place. And you'll be able to fill the damage with one application of body filler. Let's go back and try this procedure on our rust damage. Hold the dental floss in one hand and carefully slide the screen through the hole. In order to keep your fingers away from the sharp metal edges, you might want to use a pull rod to help position the screen. Now hold the floss with one hand and tape the ends down with your other hand. The tape will help keep the screen in place during filling. The screen is in place in our repair and we're ready to fill the damage. I recommend on all rust repair to use a fiberglass reinforced filler. If you've never used this type of filler, you might want to practice with it before you put any on the repair.
Mix the filler with overlapping motions, then spread the filler out in the box. Once the filler hardens, the box is no longer porous. Use it as a mixing tray for all of your future repairs. Now, let's put some filler on our repair. Notice on the right half of your screen how the filler actually bonds to the metal's inner surface and through the screen. Once it hardens, this fiberglass reinforced filler will be locked in place. Wipe your spreader clean with a rag now before the filler hardens and your spreader will remain like new for many repairs. We're gonna let that filler harden and then we'll sand it with coarse sandpaper and a sanding block. Let's trim the dental floss. Sand it with our coarse paper. Use a finer sandpaper to smooth the repair out before priming. Now I'm going to re-tape around the window and apply primer to the repair. If you're repairing a large area of damage, you may need to fill in any low spots with another coat of filler. If you do, I recommend using a lightweight body filler as your final coat of filler because it's easier to sand and shape. Prime the repair with four to five coats of primer, and when it dries, we'll lightly sand the repair again and fill in any sand scratches or pits left in the filler with glazing and spot putty. We've re-sanded the glazing putty and you notice that it has only filled in the small scratches and pits left in the filler. Let's re-prime this repair. Apply another coat of glazing putty if necessary and re-sand with finer sandpaper. Now let's look at a common rust problem you'll often find when restoring older vehicles. Rusted out floorboards and interiors. Unless you're doing a classic restoration, it's not always necessary to get fancy with the floorboard repair since you'll probably be reinstalling carpeting over the repair. We've removed the seats and carpeting from this Jeep, and I see here that someone has sprayed primer over this rust, but didn't really make any repair. As you can see, this rust is quite extensive. It is actually eaten through the metal. I'm going to grind away as much of this rust as possible, and then I'll reprime the rust with red oxide primer and repair the damage with new metal. Until now in this video, I've been making repairs with very basic tools that almost every handyman has in his garage. But in this Jeep, I'm gonna use my shop grinder. You can rent heavy duty shop tools such as this at almost all tool and equipment rental stores. Be familiar with operation and safe handling of them before using them. Notice that this rust is a lot more extensive than what it originally appeared to be. I'm going to go ahead and sandblast some of this rust before I prime it. Here's a couple of tips you might want to practice when sandblasting. To keep the sand out of my pants and pocket, I always wear a t-shirt and leave it untucked. And I tie a rag around my head to keep the sand out of my hair. Since many abrasives used with sandblasters can create dust that can be harmful to you, you should use a respirator approved for sandblasting.
I picked this one up at a local welding supply store. It not only offers good protection against dust and fumes, but the vent on the front of the mask allows easier breathing without fogging up your safety goggles. Always wear eye protection and respirator when sandblasting. Never aim sandblaster toward any part of your body. Tape over any glass or chrome within several feet of the area to be sandblasted. We've sandblasted and painted the damage with a red oxide primer. To further protect the damage before we apply metal, we're going to spray it with a rubberized undercoating. While we're waiting for the undercoat to dry, I'm going to call some local sheet metal shops. Many of them are glad to sell their end pieces and scraps at a very reasonable price. For under $10, I was able to pick up several pieces of scrap sheet metal, and the shop even bent this piece for me. I've cut the sheet metal to fit the repair. Let's set it in place. That's perfect. We're ready to install our new panel now. If you've never used a rivet gun before, let's go to the workbench, and I'll show you how it works. We've already drilled a 1 8 inch hole through these two pieces of metal we're going to bond together with a rivet. Insert the stem of the rivet into the rivet gun and put the tool through the two pieces of metal and work the rivet gun. The stem of the rivet will pop off and you'll find that the two pieces of metal are now bound together. Besides my points that filings create rust, I'm going to install this patch as most people would do without being concerned about the filings under the patch. Then I'll remove the patch in a couple of days to show you how the filings turn to rust. I've removed the patch to show you that in less than one week, these filings have already began to rust. Let's clean the filings up and reinstall the patch. Remember to be sure and clean up the filings to prevent future rust. Unlike the repair we saw earlier when we pulled the carpeting out of the Jeep, this repair will be here for a long time. Now let's review some of the techniques I've demonstrated in this video. Then I'll take the sheet metal installation a couple steps further in this exterior repair. On light surface rust, sand the rust, then apply OSFO. Let the OSFO dry overnight, re-sand, and prime the damage. Use a wire wheel attachment or sandblaster to remove any tight rust. Notice we've also taped over the cowl vent to save these filings from entering that body cavity. Repair small holes with screen wire and fiberglass reinforced body filler. You can use a pull rod to help position the screen in there. On exterior repairs that you'll be finishing with body filler, mask off the damage and undercoat only the area that will be underneath your patch. I'm ready to install some new metal over this damage so I'll need to shape the patch as close as I can to the car's original shape. 
Notice I've already roughed up my patch with the grinder. The metal is easier to grind before you cut or bend it. Use a hammer and block of wood and any other tools available to help you shape the patch. Body fillers adhere to untreated metal better than they adhere to galvanized metal. Use untreated metal for exterior repairs that you will be finishing with body fillers. Notice this patch is painted on the backside for additional protection against rust. Now let's check our patch for fit against the damage. That looks real good, so we're going to drill some pilot holes for the rivets. Now I'm going to install a rivet in the hole to hold the patch in place while I drill the other holes for the rivets. I've drilled all the pilot holes for my rivets now. And we're going to remove the rivets and the patch and wipe up any of the drill shavings left behind the patch. After installing the new metal, lightly tap the edges of the patch in about an eighth of an inch before applying filler. Apply the fiberglass reinforced filler over the edges of the patch. Apply fiberglass reinforced body filler over the repair. After it hardens, we use a coarse sandpaper and sanding block to shape the filler. Since I'm going to finish the repair with lightweight filler, this coat doesn't need to be perfect. Now I'm going to apply lightweight body filler over the entire repair and I'm using a straight edge to level the filler. If you've never seen anyone use a straight edge to level the filler, then you missed this tip and a lot of other valuable information in my dent repair video. apply another coat of lightweight body filler to these low spots. After sanding and shaping the final coat of filler with your coarse sandpaper, re-sand the repair with a finer grit of paper before applying primer paint. Finish the repair by sanding the primer and applying glazing putty to the sand scratches and pits left in the repair.
finish this repair by wet sanding with a very fine sandpaper. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll benefit from my tips. In future videos, I intend to show you how you can customize your own car just as this Camaro's been done. You can build your own hood scoops, fender flares, ground effects, and things of that nature. If you'd like to learn more, write to Smart Body Shop Talk, P.O. Box 761, Mariester, Florida, 32569.